All right, so this was the first, like, real arc within the series. It's a mini arc, granted, you know, it's the beginning of the series, and you know, usually the first little adventure only lasts a couple chapters, and it's just enough to borderline call it an arc, you know? If it happens over, like, you know, the course of a couple chapters and its own confined story, I feel like it should count. Um, but either way, I actually really like this chapter. The thing about this chapter, though... Chapter 7 was a very heavy, like, Tonkachi character chapter, and we, like, saw the level of extent that he will go uh, in order to, you know, as he says, uh, achieve, like, build the wishes uh, of his clients. Like, he wants to build these houses for them because it's, like, you know, shaping their dreams as he kind of, like, sees it. And he went into, like, a two-week coma because of that. Like, I thought it was going to be a day or so, but, like, they said two weeks, and I'm like, granted, it makes sense the amount of time that passed with how the characters have been, um, you know, they were working on a castle, so it made a lot of sense. And even with the speed that they're going with, like, two weeks is fast because a castle like that in real life, if you were going to do it, j just not even talk about crazy... Uh, power level extra components that go into it considering up like the, the the level of just density and strength of the fang but it's still huge it would take probably at, at the bare minimum months to maybe even years to build a castle that big but this is you know a shonen and this panel is actually probably my favorite of the chapter i really like just generally the the layout of it with Renga being in front of this massive uh round of wood and then he pulls out his vigor saw because we didn't know exactly what his kind of skills were going to be. We knew he builds, but we hadn't seen him really do much since the start of the series. Because, you know, we've been seeing more on Tonkachi and then getting the, uh, you know, the, the stuff with the Upside Down Castle, getting Cork. It, it's been way more groundwork for the series. And I was happy to finally get a moment for him this chapter. And he pulls out the Vigor Saw and he just kind of, it looks like he's just waving it around. And then the log just splits into a bunch of, uh, just a bunch of timber. I thought that was actually really cool in general. I wonder if what its exact description is, because the power of the Vigor Hammer is, you know, it's fueled by the vitality of the user. It's fueled by their strength, and that makes the rod bigger. The bigger the rod, the stronger the swings. So, I'm curious to know what exactly the the description of what the Vigor Saw's abilities are. I'm guessing it's the same thing, or it's probably fueled by vitality, but whatever its abilities are is obviously a question, and it doesn't get bigger. Like, I don't think there was anything visually that telling. Like, the Vigor Hammer, we see it just straight get bigger. You know, the, the, the like, bar on it, the, the handle portion, not the handle portion, just, I guess the rod is just easy as they would say, but the, the, the shaft of the hammer visibly gets bigger the only thing really can see is when renga swung it like he was swinging it around you see like that almost air wave around it but i i don't know if that was just for the sake of having the pattern of, of like him moving it and maybe like the swiftness of it going but i don't know i thought it was just really cool to see it displayed and then I was happy to see the shovel head actually is going to be relevant that was one of the things that in the previous chapter um well I think it was, what, the previous, the last chapter? I don't remember if it, it was shown in 6 or 7, but it's going to stay relevant. I am curious to know who's going to get it, because Quark doesn't have a weapon or anything yet, and I, I'm i hoping that she doesn't just become, like, a tag-along, kind of, like, not-do-stuff character. Maybe somewhere between Tonkachi and Ranga. I'm hoping she gains the ability to actually fight whenever stuff happens. Not obviously the same level as Tonkachi, because he is definitely way above probably what anyone in his age group, at least I would assume, is at. Because he's clearly very powerful already. We don't know the, like where he would place. I doubt he'd be like actually a big deal in the world. Like If we had like the world rankings, he'd probably still be super low. There's probably like thousands of builders that are just physically way more powerful than him. I, I would guess that he's, you know, he's probably like a lot of shonen main characters where he just starts out further ahead than what you'd expect somebody at his age but you know he's got he's got a lot of determination so it makes sense but uh, like the chapter starts obviously the the castle breaks a new fang comes in and then tonkachi just kind of falls and we see like that that little like gap of time two weeks two weeks uh of here of, of just working has happened 
But before then, when Tonkachi is just laying in bed and we see Renga talking about it. Renga has this very serious look on his face. He's like, Tonkachi created the foundation of the castle. He risked his life to lay down the castle's groundwork. And you see him just look at his brother and he's like, now it's my turn. And I really liked that. I was happy to see him in this chapter because not only did he, you know, put in a lot of the building work, but he took charge of a lot of the people. And I thought that was, that, I thought that was really cool and, and a really good character moment for him because I'm not too sure what what Shimabakuro's plans are going to be for him. Because you had Komatsu in Toriko. And if you've read Toriko, you know that like Komatsu wasn't a fighter, but he had his own value and skills that he brought to the team. And that's what I'm guessing Tonkachi, or sorry, not Tonkachi, Renga's going to have. But I really liked that he was just like dead set, like, okay, I have to do this. I'm not going to let my brother's uh, kind of work go to waste he's he's got to put in the effort and then we've got some stuff from cork and cork um like when she was talking to king bat like, i guess like way back when he first adopted her and they're saying how like she didn't like she didn't like it when the sun sets because you know it's dark it's scary out and he said to look at it upside down and instead the sun is going up and it you know, they had this whole thing about how it's like uh it's like gently like hugging like the uh, i think it was like gently hugging the land or something the, the way that he was kind of describing it was just a very nice calming way you know talking to a little kid i thought that was a really nice moment for this guy too because he looks he's a very scary looking guy like not just the fact that he's very big but he's why I mean he's white white too, but he's got the big head. He's obviously like very vampire like, but he's a nice dude. Like his people like him. Uh, his, clearly his daughter likes him. We see him just talking to a little kid and and being a polite dude. There's no there's no point in him that he seems like a scary guy other than like the base appearance of him. He looks very intimidating. But after the two weeks passes, you know of them just working on the house, getting everything set up, you have the you have the upside down castle restored and. I'm a little, I'm all saddened by it because I liked the Upside Down Castle. The last one was like the, it was like a very scary, like Victorian vampire kind of feel to it. But now it, it's more of like a very happy, like good, good energy. I, I was going to, I could just say it's, it's more like corks design because it's got like frills and, it, it, you know, it's got like hearts on it and stuff. So it makes me wonder, is she going to actually stay with the main cast or like what, what's the deal with her going to be? Because I figured she would be the female lead, but I mean, I, I'm kind of fine with it if he, if the king, even though it's not badass looking like the previous one, it has a lot of, you know, it's got a lot of, uh, more emotional stuff that I probably, that he probably would have tied to it. And then maybe the happier style might, uh, bring more people back to the castle. But on top of that, if Cork does end up like going on an adventure with the main cast, it would probably be a, a really nice reminder of her because he did adopt her and, you know, she sees him as a dad, he sees her as a daughter. So if she's gone and, you know, anytime he goes and sees the outside of the castle, it, it's going to be like just a, a nice heartfelt remembrance uh, for him of, you know, uh, the day that she left. But also, you know, it's uh, the stuff, stuff place that she has to, to return to and whatnot. But I thought this was just a really nice chapter, like in general, like the, even Tonkachi, like had a, a really good moment this chapter. And I... A bunch of really good moments. Like I said, Renga got a really good moment at the start, and I think his was the most needed, and that's why I wanted to give him a little bit more of attention in this review, because Tonkachi, we've, we've already got a lot of good moments for him. Granted, in the last chapter and this chapter, we got really uh, some more set character moments instead of badass, kind of just cool establishment stuff. But Renga, I, I think Renga's was more important to see just because we hadn't gotten to him yet but i really like tonkachi talking about how on the island he was like a failure he couldn't do what he you know he, he was bad at construction work because we know that he is horrible at building houses but he's good at you know as he says building peace like he's good at fighting the monsters doing the as he states it manual labor and it's it makes sense to why he, he you know he praises his brother so much because tonkachi you know putting in the groundwork and, you know, finding monsters and stuff, him seeing as manual labor, kind of the grunt stuff, it makes sense of why he would hype up his brother. He's like, you're doing the real work. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm just doing the smashing and, and, and heavy lifting and stuff. And heavy lifting as in literally lifting stuff up, not not in the idea of, you know, I carried it and whatnot, like carried the, the progress. But he's like, he's glad he finished the job. He, he, he really wanted to help so, like, extremely badly. And 
it, it brought him a lot of joy knowing that he was able to help accomplish that. So I really liked this chapter. I thought this was a really just pleasant early series chapter. Like, like I said, this, this chapter had three solid different character moments. And assuming Cork is going to be the main cast, it, applying to the whole main cast is really nice. The last thing that was really important of the chapter, well, I assume really important, but to the extent, who knows, is at the very end of the chapter when uh, when, when Tonkachi goes to talk to the king, when talk to the king bat, he's like, oh, you know, uh, we had this, Cork drew a picture of a, of our house beast. Uh, do you know this house beast? And he shows it to him and he's uh, he's like, how how is this even alive? Uh, two by four. So clearly that's a big deal. And the reason that's a big deal, if you've read the, anybody who's read the, Build King one shot. the The reason it was called Build King. I, I'm trying to remember the exact description. It was like there are living houses, but it was like the final masterpiece of a builder. And when they finish, they put their they literally put their soul into it. And I I can't remember if it's their like they live now as the house, or if it's like the house is now alive through like their life energy, and it's a different person. But the Build King was the top tier like the like the king of these living buildings i can't remember exactly what it's called i think it was called like a structure anima or something but the build king was two by four and it was this badass it actually was a really badass looking house like it it, it in its base state was was kind of like a, just a beefier version of their house beast but then it could turn into like almost like a gundam style of a house it was really cool but I really want to know what the plan is now for 2x4, because instead of the Build King in the previous series being the, you know, the strongest and, you know, the pinnacle of these living houses, the Build Kings are these godlike structures that have, like, never waned from the crazy natures of the world and whatnot. So, I was really happy with this, like I said. I think this is a really good chapter, um... I still think the series needs a solid fight. Like, even if it's just a chapter or two, I, th I think the series really needs a good battle because though I know what the manga is like, like, and there's obviously power level stuff already established. Like we see like how strong Tonkachi is and he's got a, literally a weapon that scales with how physically strong and uh, just how much his vitality is. I mean, really, his energy and physical strength. I think that's the difference between vitality and strength. Like it has their stamina in there too. But... It hasn't had, like, a good action scene, so, like, that the idea of it just kind of, like, having more building, more carpentry, is a little bit harder to sell than, say, like, Toriko, where Toriko had food in it, like, cooking was a large aspect to it, but it also had a lot of intense battles between, you know, characters and with monsters and stuff. And that's what I think Build King really just needs. Like, if we can just get, like, Tonkachi maybe having a good chapter or two against some big creature, I think the series will pick up a lot more for people and everybody that i've gotten to to read it so far finds it interesting i think we just need some you know some good action and uh and just get uh really lay out more of what's to come rather than just the world building and whatnot because we already have some good character moments and and i really like tonkachi as a main character i think he's a really fun but at the same time he's pretty cool and he's pretty funny so that's a big plus in my book. But anyway, other than that, though, comment below. Uh, tell me your thoughts are about this chapter. I, I did really like this panel. I think just visually looking at this massive piece of wood and it's nothing to Renga. And it makes me wonder what, um, if you put Renga in a similar spot where it's like maybe he had some giant, like what is his biggest piece of wood that he can cut? And it, it's a little weird to say, but like if, if you can imagine some, like imagine like a, a hundred foot wide log, it's gigantic. And he's like, I have to do this for, you know, uh, you know maybe he's got a, put up a display for some other builders or something he's he wants to you know even if you don't really need that much of like a like a, a pseudo scenario because we know that he would want to put in the effort for whatever they're doing he's not a slacker and he's not helpless he's just not a fighter he's still capable in in what they're doing but anyway other than that though uh, comment below if thumbs up the video friend the like button subscribe button and check out my other videos but other than that i appreciate every time you subscribe and thank you all for listening bye